Now, back to Transport Topics Radio with host Dan Ronan. On Transport Topics Radio here on Sirius XM Channel 146, we welcome two new voices to the program. The Executive Director of the Combined Ports of Seattle and Tacoma, John Wolf, and John McCarthy he is the co-chairman of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Again, that is the organizing governmental group that runs both of those facilities and both of those newsmakers join us on the line from out in the northwestern part of the United States. Executive Director Wolf, let me start with you first because uh, you're the man who runs the day-to-day operations of those facilities. How are the ports doing generally? Sure. Thanks, Dan, for that question. Uh, Through June, uh, our container cargo volumes are down approximately 18% as compared to 2019. Our customers here also handle automobile imports and brake bulk cargo. Auto imports are down just over 30% year to date and our brake bulk tonnage is down just uh, 1% over last year. Uh, Turning to the operations, the Seaport Alliance Gateway is performing well operationally given the challenging conditions that we all faced with. Uh, The terminals remain operational. Uh, There's excess capacity within the gateway to handle higher volumes of cargo as we recover from this recession. The greatest challenge we're facing, quite frankly, is that the terminal operators generate revenue by the vessel lifts. And with the volumes being down, the terminal operators are forced to reduce their gate hours of operation to manage their costs. In addition to that, we've we've seen over 50 canceled sailings year to date. And the combination of these two issues has created some inconsistent service in the supply chain. And as you can imagine, the supply chains perform at the highest level when there's consistent, reliable service. And that's been a struggle for the ports uh, and and certainly for this Northwest Seaport Alliance this year. Commissioner McCarthy, I know that uh, several groups, uh, the American Association of Port Authorities, as well as individual ports such as New York and New Jersey, have sought federal assistance. Is federal assistance uh, one of the ways that uh, your port and others can recoup some of these losses that have been, as uh, as the executive director is saying, quite significant? Absolutely. Uh, the federal government really needs to step up its game in terms of its support of ports throughout the country. Uh, Overall, and this even goes before the pandemic, uh, modernization of our critical transportation infrastructure should really be a top federal government priority and a focus of federal investment by all its uh, grant programs. Uh, So we've needed that help to remain competitive uh, with other uh, countries, uh, even on the West Coast, uh, for example, Canada. So we need the federal government to step up uh, overall, and particularly at this time in this this uh, pandemic situation. Commissioner, I'm, sh- I'm sure you're familiar also that there was a recently a uh, a report that looked at the situation on the West Coast ports, and we had uh, one of the authors of the of that report on Transport Topics Radio recently to discuss it pointing out that market share is down a little less than 20 percent, 17, 18 uh, percent. Are the West Coast ports, and Commissioner McCarthy, I'll let uh, you start, and then Mr. Wolf, uh, you can follow up. Uh, are you operating at a disadvantage right now compared to your competitors on the East Coast? I, I think we are, and I think there are several factors, one of which is uh, our tr- uh, top trading partner in the Pacific Northwest is China. So uh, not just the pandemic, uh, but the the trade war, the tariff situation has impacted uh, us uh, substantially. Executive Director Wolf? Yes. Uh, you know, the seaport competes with uh, with different types of ports by cargo type. And, and although we have a diversified cargo mix within our gateway, we're highly dependent on the international container market, as that's far and away our largest business unit. Uh, you know, we compete with the Canadian ports on the West Coast as well as the other uh, major port gateways in the United States. And it's, it's critically important that we have an even playing field, that there's equity uh, within the port system so that uh, uh, with that, we believe we can compete uh, and, and be extremely successful. One area that I, I would like to highlight as an example where we feel like uh, we're disadvantaged is with regard to the harbor maintenance tax. And we've been working with the Ports Association at, at the federal level to pursue uh, tax reform with uh, HMT. 
the, the ports uh, like Seattle, Tacoma, and even LA and Long Beach, uh, the, the funds that uh, are created through our gateways support a significant amount of the overall collection of harbor maintenance tax funds on an annual basis. Yet, ports like Seattle, Tacoma, LA, Long Beach uh, really don't get much in the way of benefit from uh, the collection of those funds. And we're looking for expanded uses and some uh, some equity amongst that federal policy. So that's a good example of where we're pursuing uh, a, a more even playing field. Executive Director Wolf, uh, recently I saw and reported on the fact that the Port of Oakland, uh, south of you, uh, was cutting its budget by about 15% for next fiscal year because of the coronavirus pandemic. And there's also some capital improvement uh, cuts in there as well, where they're going to be delaying some purchases for big items. Uh, do you believe that the nation's ports are going to find themselves at a disadvantage if they have to put these dredging projects, these crane builds, these things that they need to do off at a time when bigger ships are coming into the ports? Yeah, great question. My opinion, you know, there's really a never bad time to make wise investments in our port infrastructure. Uh, you know, port's core mission is job creation, uh, and, it, and that's made through st strategic investments in our infrastructure that attract valuable customers to our community and the good paying jobs that come with it. So, you know, ports typically have far more investment opportunities and financial capability, and the key is to evaluate and compare those investment opportunities so that we make the best economic decisions with our limited capital. And as Commissioner McCarthy stated earlier, it's critically important now more than ever that uh, that we seek assistance from the federal government and the investment in ports, because that is going to be part of the solution to bring this economy out of the recession. Commissioner McCarthy, a question for you is, what are we, what are we looking at? Maybe you have some statistics that you can cite that show uh, how many tens of thousands of good paying middle class jobs whether they be longshoremen or truck drivers or delivery uh, drivers, whatever the case may be, are, are employed or have some connection to Seattle, Tacoma? Well, that, that's a great question because the answer really is that seaports uh, serve the entire nation, not just the coastal areas, the Great Lake states, uh, because international trade through seaports uh, account for one-fourth of the U.S. economy and support over 31 million American jobs. Uh, in 2018, uh, the uh, seaports in this country generated uh, nearly $5.4 trillion in economic activity and more than uh, $378 billion in federal, state, and local uh, tax revenue. So it's not just the coastal areas. Uh, we serve and uh, move products uh, from uh, the central part of the country. And, you know, we've got statistics as to the products that uh, uh, are from Illinois, from Nebraska, uh, from uh, many states and, and where they end up. So we do more than just serve our communities. We serve uh, the entire nation and, and our port systems infrastructure really is challenged now. And, uh, as I think I mentioned before, you know, the federal government help and recognition of the importance in our society would, would really uh, help us significantly. Executive Director Wolf, we've got about a minute and a half left in this segment, and I'll let you take the rest of the segment. How have you been adapting in terms of the operations in the port because of COVID-19? What sort of safety precautions are being implemented or have been implemented to protect the workers and make sure that uh, the freight moves at the same time? Sure. Uh, you know, that is uh, that is a critical issue for all of business uh, in this day and age. And, and certainly the Northwest Seaport Alliance is taking uh, the safety of our workforce and the health of our workforce uh, seriously. Uh, it's all about partnerships. And for us, uh, we're leaning in uh, more than ever to uh, effective communication with our workforce, uh, the frontline workers that are out on the docks day in and day out. Uh, it's critical that we ensure that they have a safe work environment. Um, and also working with the terminal operators, the trucking community, 
and and all of really all of the logistics supply chain partners to ensure that as we um, hand that cargo off through the supply chain that we do that in a safe manner. I, I will say this, um, right now we're doing fairly well with regard to having safety equipment available for our workforce, yet um, there's always uh, emerging requirements and having the support of the federal government and the state government to assist us uh, in keeping these ports open is, is critical again to uh, the U.S. economy. And so uh, we continue to look for that support from from the federal and state uh, government level. And um, the other issue we need to uh, continue to focus on is effective and timely testing of the virus. And that has at times been a challenge, more so in terms of uh, when tests are made, uh, the, the time it takes to have the results of those tests brought back to um, the workforce. So that's an area of opportunity for improvement. Our guest are the executive director, John Wolf of the two ports at Seattle, Tacoma, and John McCarthy. He is the co-chair of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. They are joining us on the Newsmaker Line from Seattle. We'll be back with more of Transport Topics Radio here on Sirius XM after these messages. Welcome back to Transport Topics Radio with Dan Ronan. Back on Transport Topics Radio here on Sirius XM Channel 146. We are joined by two new voices to the program and two very good guests. John McCarthy, he's the co-chairman of the Northwest Seaport Alliance in Seattle and Tacoma, the organization that oversees those particular facilities, and the executive director, John Wolf, both join us on the Newsmaker Line from Seattle. Mr. McCarthy, uh, there's a lot of discussion about the issue of clean air. And uh, we all know that uh, we have climate change issues to deal with. And there is a, a lot of discussion about that, about how we obtain clean air, but keep commerce moving. As uh, a port that brings in a lot of trucks every day, I would imagine hundreds of them to take cargo in and out. What are some of the things being done at your facilities to make the environment around the ports uh, a little cleaner for the folks who live nearby and also for those truck drivers. Because trucks uh, bring us three things that people don't necessarily enjoy. One is uh, pollution and two is uh, congestion. And the third thing is some risk factors. So we've engaged in the last two years in a clean air trucks program uh, to compel uh, people that bring trucks through our terminals on our international cargoes to have trucks uh, that are fairly new to reduce uh, the carbon and other emissions. That's been a very successful program. We've uh, been able to accomplish that, uh, reduce the number of trucks, if you will, uh, and uh, we were able to accomplish that in a little over a year with the work and cooperation of our shippers, uh, as well as terminal operators and the, the truckers themselves. So that's been a very good program, and we're advancing uh, that same philosophy uh, to some of our other terminal operations and the equipment that we're using to make them uh, friendly to the community. Mr. Wolf, have the uh, moves in this direction been, for the most part, cordial? I would imagine that there's always a certain degree of tension to one degree or another when there are changes that are made, but for the most part, have the the clean air rules and the regulations that uh, you brought forward, have they been done with a spirit of congeniality? Absolutely. You know, most of our customers have similar environmental values as we do. And so uh, when we can align those values and find creative solutions uh, that are, you know, both effective and, and cost competitive, uh, that's, that's when we see great success. The other thing I would highlight is that, um, when we see policy direction around these important environmental issues made at the international or if not international national level, that's where we see significant and immediate change in a positive way. And so I would say that that is far more effective at uh, generating the results we're all uh, shooting for than uh, having just a local approach. Mr. Wolf, uh, the Port of Oakland is very, very prominent with regards to 
the shipping of agriculture products to China. And they've made that uh, one of their niche markets, whether it be soybeans or pork. Uh, Los Angeles, we see a lot of items that are of the heavy, Long, uh, Long Beach as well, heavier items. What in particular, when you were talking about the imports and exports to China, what are your biggest products? On the export side, we have a tremendous uh, market right here in our backyard. Uh, we have a great uh, agricultural network in eastern Washington. Uh, we're seeing products like uh, potatoes moving through our gateway, uh, uh, fruit products, apples, cherries, uh, even even refrigerated cargoes such as uh, the uh, proteins, uh, the meats uh, like uh, the beef, pork, uh, chicken. So uh, the, one of the strengths of our marketplace and our gateway is that we have a healthy balance of imports and exports through this gateway. And that's really important because uh, for those exports to get to foreign markets, they need those exporters need to have ample equipment and vessel space um, so that they have the, the capability to serve those foreign markets. And you're seeing, I would imagine, also much larger ships coming in and out of your port. Uh, it is uh, routine, I guess, now to see uh, ships that can uh, carry 12,000, 14,000 uh, containers, this becomes a regular occurrence. Absolutely. It's one of the significant changes that we've seen over the past years within our industry. And that's a game changer because as ports, one of the fundamental aspects of what we bring to the marketplace is, uh, is infrastructure to support the customer's needs. And so as we've seen the introduction of these larger vessels entering the major trade lanes like the Trans-Pacific Trade, uh, it's forcing us to revisit our gateway infrastructure, you know, the terminal infrastructure, and and not only that, but our our gate uh, infrastructure and the uh, the road and rail network and, and and even the waterway network that serves uh, the supply chain. It is, I imagine, uh, a little bit more challenging to load or unload a bigger ship. Is there more use of automation to do this in terms of uh, just making it uh, speeding, speeding the process up? We're always looking for ways to uh, drive out inefficiency in operations. And again, we, we work in partnership with our terminal operators and labor partners. Uh, there are uh, advances in technology that are assisting the workforce in, in that effort. And um, certainly uh, when the terminal operators uh, make strategic decisions about their investments in automation, we want to make sure that uh, we do that in a way that uh, uh, supports their efforts to uh, drive out the inefficiency while continuing to work with our labor force and respect their jurisdiction and the jobs that they uh, they really uh, value uh, here on a waterfront. Commissioner McCarthy, there's been a lot of discussion about the issue of tariffs. And uh, as I said before, uh, Gene Soroka down in Los Angeles has been an outspoken critic of tariffs and said that uh, the combination of COVID-19 and the tariffs have uh, done a lot of damage to the ports on the West Coast. Uh, any movement on that you see politically between now and the election uh, to maybe ease that? Or are we in a period where, because of the fact we're less than 100 days out to the election, there, there won't be anything until after we know the results of the election in November? Uh, I suspect, just as an outsider to the political arena of the presidential race to some extent, I suspect things are pretty much going to remain the same uh, in terms of the relationship between the United States and one of our largest trading partners, uh, China. And so uh, I, I do have concerns that they'll remain the same, and that has not been helpful. If I can make a finer point uh, on what John had mentioned about our agricultural trade, uh, the tariffs have impacted them, and it's impacted the uh, Seaport Alliance because we really we've been the second largest port in the country as uh, measured by agricultural uh, trade uh, tonnage, and we're the leading export gateway for refrigerated agricultural products uh, with about 20% of the national volumes. So the the tariff wars. And, and it impacts not only those commodities, but hay, potatoes, 
uh, soybeans, and, and we've shipped about 23% of all soybean products uh, from the United States. So the tariff wars, particularly with our largest trading partner, China, have been significant. And I'm, I'm not seeing the end of that between now and the election. Mr. Wolf, are you are you still sending back to China a lot of empty containers that are, that are going back because of uh, diminishing space available around your facility? I know some ports have had that trouble as well. We are, although our, our empty repositioning volumes are down as compared to last year, um, we still do uh, see a lot of repositioning of empty containers back to Asia for those uh, imports coming back our way. Um, to, to Commissioner McCarthy's point, uh, you know, part of that is driven by uh, the tariffs and it's led to higher prices for our consumers. Uh, it's uh, created financial difficulty for our farmers and the U.S. manufacturers. And uh, so, you know, we, we're questioning the effectiveness of tariffs. Certainly, um, there are real trade issues that we need to address, yet we don't believe that tariffs have been effective in driving to the results that we're all looking for. I want to just ask you one last question to both of you. We are typically in the season now when uh, – the retailers start to gear up for holidays, uh, Christmas, of course, and the Christmas uh, season. Are we looking at a a decent Christmas in terms of the ports? And what type of a what type of a third quarter do you think we'll see? Third and fourth quarter, with regards to your side of the house. Well, the good news is is that as uh, we look to the next few months, we're seeing fewer canceled sailings from our our shipping line partners. So that's encouraging news. We're also seeing a slight uptick in volume as we move into what we call peak season in uh, anticipation of the holiday uh, rush. So I, I don't expect that it's going to be a typical peak season year because this year has been anything but typical. And it's it's really challenging to uh, look into the crystal ball and forecast with any clarity uh, what's going to occur beyond maybe 30, 60 days, because um, the market is so fluid right now. And uh, with the uncertainty about uh, COVID-19 and, and how quickly we can get control of that whole issue, that's going to play into how quickly uh, our economy recovers, business gets back to uh, functioning at a high level, and people uh, that have confidence, that consumers have confidence in in uh, the marketplace. Commissioner, optimistic or pessimistic? Uh, I'm optimistic. Uh, I was optimistic the second quarter, and I was proven to be wrong. That's the one thing we've learned about the pandemic. It's a bit unpredictable, but I am optimistic that things are going to pick up in the third quarter. John McCarthy, the co-chairman of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, the group that runs the Tacoma and Seattle ports, and the executive director, John Wolf, joining us on the Newsmaker Line. We appreciate their contribution to Transport Topics Radio. We'll be right back after these messages on Sirius XM Channel 146.